Hello guys and welcome back to Freedom Forest. If you're new to the channel, Freedom Forest is three acres of land that me and my partner Laurie grow on in the southeast of the UK. And today I'm getting round to a job I've been really excited about, which is installing some drip lines in our polytunnels. So we have three 54 foot polytunnels here where we grow a variety of warm loving crops like tomatoes, chili peppers, sweet potatoes, aubergines, you name it. And it's only me and Laurie managing all of this. And the amount of time it's taken us to actually be in here watering during the warmer growing season when temperatures can be 40 plus degrees in here is getting quite intense as well as the heat. And I actually got quite bad heat stroke last year. Um, so had enough of that really so we've decided drip lines in here will be a fantastic option and apparently drip lines as opposed to manual watering can save up to 70% of water. You may or may not be able to tell but this land is on a slight gradient coming downhill towards the camera here and we had previously tried some of the black soaker hose and what I was finding is because we're going downhill and we have lower than mains water pressure, it seemed to be dripping more out the bottom of the hose than it was at the top. So it was really important to me to make sure that if we're spending our money, we're gonna get something that actually works. And there's quite a few different types of drip line on the market, but we've actually gone for one which has something called pressure compensation, which means because this is coming downhill, it's got something called labyrinth technology in it as well. And I'll show you a little um, close up of inside the pipe in a minute, um, which basically helps to ensure that you're not gonna be getting all your water at the bottom if you're on a slope like we are and not much at the top. So before we begin installing this drip line, let's have a little closer look at it. And this particular one comes in either brown or black. And Another beauty of this that I didn't mention earlier is that you can actually bury this one up to uh, between 50 and 100 millimetres, um, which is really handy for us because um, we like to put wood chips on our beds. And we went for the brown because it will probably blend in a little bit better with the wood chips than the black. And this particular one has a spacing, a whole spacing of 30 centimetres and it's rated to 2.1 litres per hour. And what that means is each of these holes over an hour period of time will emit 2.1 litres of water. And I mentioned earlier about this labyrinth technology. So I'll cut a bit of the pipe now and we'll see if we can find that. If I go close to one of the holes. Now, different ways of cutting this. When I'm cutting different types of pipe, you get little pipe cutters like this for more rigid pipe um, that you put on and twist around. But I found that not to really work on this. Um, so you could either use a hacksaw or just for speed, I've actually just been using the circular saw here. And obviously we want to get it as square as possible when we cut across. Okay, yeah, so we can see down in there now, if we take a closer look with the camera. So as you can see here, it's not just a pipe with holes in, there is some technology inside this. So in terms of working out how much pipe I needed, I'll be honest with you, I didn't put much time and effort into working that out. I just thought, right, we've got three beds in each of our polytunnels, uh, one bed either side and one in the middle, and these are roughly 17 metres long. So I just times 17 by the six beds which I wanted to cover. Um, without realising or thinking that actually, if the pipe is just in a straight line, especially where, that, where we are going down a slope here, it's not gonna get very good even coverage over this bed. And our beds are just over a metre wide. So now in hindsight, what I would actually do is get a rope and put it roughly in the shape that I would want the drip line to be going. And then you can take it out of the space and pull that in a long straight line mark the end with a bit of tape or something and then you can then pace out or use a long 
uh, measuring tape to get the total meters that you might need for your bed. Really crucially actually as well, I've found this with other pipe in the past, what you don't want to do is pull it out like this. If you see all those kinks in the pipe, it's where it's kind of conformed to that shape, it's like a spring. Um, if you kind of face it the way the pipe's coming off and then walk back with it, slowly letting it out, that way the pipe comes out much straighter and flatter. So prior to filming this, I'd already worked out that I needed two 25 meter lengths and a 20 meter length for the middle. And I would pre-cut those already, which I have here. And I made sure I added a little bit of leeway, a few meters, um, just to take up the kind of inaccuracies of measuring like this, because both aren't matching exactly to each other. When it comes to fitting this drip line, um, you can actually buy these pegs uh, separately that come with it to match the type of pipe, the colour pipe you've got and the size. Now what I found with these for us in our deep mulch here because it's a very loose surface they're tending not to really stay in that well. Um, I'm sure if you were just doing more of a traditional setup and going straight into the topsoil these would be absolutely fine. So what I've actually found really handy is I had a roll of this fencing wire here. This is 2.5 millimeter and it came on a roll of 250 meters. What I've been doing here, I've got a template length that I cut already, which I guess that's what about seven or eight inches. So I've just been holding that up, getting my length out, cutting one off and then with a pair of pliers, just bending the end round and then straightening that out. And then that's a nice peg. All right, people, let's get going fitting this then. What I've got down here is just put in a blank end cap temporarily at the moment, just so I don't get soil in here. And this tape is just where I marked the two that I'd cut to 25 meters. So I know I'm fitting the right length here. And what I've done in the other tunnel is done a bit of a kind of like radio wave <laughs> kind of shape. And what I'm thinking with that is, it's gonna be quite nice to get fairly even water in across the whole area without having to cut this pipe into a million and one pieces. Because I've seen some people where they kind of cut it, have a right angle, cut it again and do kind of right angles like that. But yeah, personally, I'm just gonna do it this way to save cutting it into so many pieces and save having potential drastic leaks down the line. But I think whatever setup you choose to do will be dependent on your individual um, needs and requirements. And it's really nice and flexible actually this stuff, but you can kink it if you go too far. So kind of it has its limits, but you can do some really nice curves and shapes in it before it gets close to uh, kinking actually, which is cool. What I'm thinking is actually leaving around about half a foot, something like that, either side of the bed, because um, I guess this water is kind of going to permeate into this area in general anyway. So if I have this going right to the edges, we're probably going to be just watering the pathways more than anything else. So we'll see how it goes. It's easily movable anyway, if I do need to change it. Okay guys, so that's that done. As you can see, I've gone for a bit of a waveform, like a radio wave here or sound wave. And I think that's gonna be really nice because it's gonna give quite a good even coverage of water throughout the bed. There's potential areas where it could be slightly drier in the kind of dips and troughs of these. But what I've done is line those up with the poles of the polytunnel. So every time that comes out, I know that we've got sort of an area towards the poles that may need slightly more water in um, and possibly in between those at the front as well. Um, because this is gonna be completely covered up with wood chips and 
probably ground cover plants like sweet potatoes. So we won't see any of this, but I'm hoping that um, 2.1 litres coming out of these um, over an hour each hole will probably be enough to soak this anyway, but we will see. Well guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video and be sure to catch me for part two where we're gonna be continuing the setup and looking at the different connections and inline filters and how I'm gonna be connecting this to our water tanks at the top there. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to. And if you've got something from this, like the video. Peace and plants.